Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geo Ecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to talk about ecosystem. So ecosystem in terms of its structure and classification is going to be part of today's discussion. Before going further, please like and subscribe to the channel The Geo Ecologist and also you can follow me on Instagram by the name of The Geo Ecologist. So let's go ahead. Now, first of all, let's look at the etymology. The word ecosystem derives from the Greek word oikos which means home and systema is system. So basically, this was coined by English botanist Arthur G. A. G. Tansley in 1935 in a paper titled "The Use and Abuse of Vegetational Concepts." This was the name of the research paper in the journal Ecology, where this concept was discussed for the first time in 1935. So remember, Arthur G. Tansley, 1935, "The Use and Abuse of Vegetational Concept." Now. We'll give the concept of three E's first. So, what is the difference between these three E? Ecology, environment, and ecosystem. So, let's understand the basic concept of these three E first. Ecology is the study of interactions between organisms and organisms and their surroundings. So, there is basically an interaction when we talk about ecology, right? Then, ecosystem is what? It is a functional unit of that. ecology it means it's a functional unit that functions that performs so mostly it is part of the biosphere what else environment is the group of such ecosystems and environment in general is all about the physical part of the nature that we generally discuss but now looking at these three different concepts the three e ecology ecosystem and environment are interlinked all right now ecosystem is defined in very particular way so it is a complex in which habitat plants and animals are considered as one interesting unit it means flora and fauna is one unit of that system and material and energy is a different component that passes through these systems of flora and fauna so this is the way it has been looked at then the organisms and physical features of habitat form an ecological complex or more briefly an ecosystem so this formation together with the physical feature and organisms are sometimes also referred to as ecological complex or ecosystem now this is the most important definition that says an ecosystem is defined as a community of life forms so what is it basically it's a community of life forms in concurrence means in sync okay in tandem with non living components okay so it is basically talking about life forms and its balance with the non living forms interacting with each other so this is the basic understanding of the ecosystem now let's look at the properties of ecosystem the characteristics of ecosystem so the first important point is that it is the functional unit of nature and remember where living organisms like producers consumers and decomposers interact among themselves all right and also with the surrounding then it is not very specific in size so it can be narrow and wide as well it can be specific and limited species can be part of it as well then what in the ecosystem biotic and abiotic living and non living are linked together through nutrient cycles and energy flows as we understand bio geochemical cycle and energy flows so that is the most important aspect now everything that lives in an ecosystem remember lives that is living is dependent on the other species this is interesting property isn't it so every living creature is dependent on the other species and elements okay that may be non living elements as well that are part of the ecological community so that is very interesting because one is not independent here dependency is the key property of ecosystem all right and if one part of ecosystem is damaged or disappears remember this is very crucial in terms of present condition where we have biodiversity loss and stuff so what happens if one part of ecosystem is damaged or disappears it has an impact on everything else in the system that is what a system means if any particular component of system is affected it will eventually affect the entire system 
so that is the basic property of ecosystem now let's look at the structure of ecosystem many a times people confuse the structure and component remember structure is the basic method of understanding the components of ecosystem all right so structure is the base so let's understand the structure and within that structure framework understand the components of ecosystem so the structure of ecosystem is basically a description of the organisms and physical features of environment including amount and distribution so it means the amount of the ecosystem structure that is the component and distribution how is it distributed in the area so that is important then from the structural point of view now in the framework of structure all ecosystems consist of the following basic components that is abiotic components and biotic components so structure of ecosystem is comprising of these two important components so i hope you will not confuse if the question is on components of ecosystem or the structure of ecosystem structure is made by these components all right so even if structure is asked then explain that structural unit of ecosystem is living and non living what are these abiotic and biotic components all right now abiotic components these are the inorganic non living components and they are also sometimes called major limiting factors remember this phrase limiting factors if indirectly there is a question on limiting factors it means we are talking about abiotic component of ecosystem so it includes air water soil minerals sunlight temperature nutrients wind altitude turbidity all such non living parts inorganic parts isn't it but why are they limiting factors let's understand why are we saying it is a limiting factor all right because lot of factors determine the survival of organism it means if these factors are limited that will limit the success of survival of organisms the living part that's why so one single factor can limit the range of an organism that's why the single factor is called limiting factor right now for example seeds don't germinate quickly in evergreen rainforest in spite of good rains and vegetation why because soil is a problem soil there is a limiting factor it is heavily leached okay nutrient loss is there in the soil so remember there is a limiting factor playing its role likewise germinated saplings may not survive due to lack of light so light becomes what a limiting factor where there is a forest area that's why it is important to understand the abiotic components as limiting factors in the ecosystem now biotic components the living components so it is basically all life part of the ecosystem so based on nutrition biotic components can be categorized into autotrophs heterotrophs and saprotrophs so these are three important classification of the biotic components okay so first of all let's understand the producers that is autotrophs it includes all the autotrophs that is as plants they are called autotrophs why because they are automated they can produce food themselves they don't require other for food making through photosynthesis this is the basic ncert thing that i'm giving you then consequently all other organisms higher up on the food chain rely on whom these autotrophs because they are the primary producers of the food then remember the consumers or the heterotrophs those are the organisms dependent on the food for whom so they want food and they want food from whom from the autotrophs so consumers are further classified into primary secondary and tertiary consumers let's look at that primary consumers are always herbivores remember primary consumers are herbivores and reliant on the primary producers that is like sheep rabbit okay then secondary consumers so they are dependent upon primary consumers for energy it means they feed upon the primary consumers example wolves dogs snake etc then what we have is tertiary consumers so tertiary consumers are now dependent upon secondary consumers so they are omnivores at times so lion eat wolves and snake so 
these are important here as tertiary consumers and at the end we see in consumers as the quaternary consumers where human beings are there it means they are present in food chains these organisms spray on tertiary consumers for energy example human beings bear pig furthermore they are usually at the top of the food chain so as you see primary secondary tertiary quaternary as we go ahead we are on the top of the food chain because they have no natural predators okay now decomposers the third and the last part so decomposers include saprophytes that is fungi bacteria so these are important decomposers because they thrive on detritus what does detritus mean dead and decaying organic matter so decomposers feed on detritus and they help in maintaining the basic principle of ecology what was that the recycling of matter and energy remember so help in recycling of nutrients to be reused by plants so every part every component if you see in the system has a defined set of role okay so earthworm for example and certain soil organisms like nematodes arthropods and detritus feeders help in decomposition of those organic matter they are also sometimes called detritivorous okay because they feed on dead items now come to the last section of today's session that is the classification of ecosystems i am giving you the maximum length of classification that is possible of the ecosystems so pay sincere thought on this and please make your notes out of it now on the basis of habitats let's classify this so it is classified on the basis of habitats and what is a habitat it's basically the physical environment in which a person a organism lives right so what happens aquatic as we know aqua water so it is pond lake river shallow water deep water this is on the basis of purely habitat then what we have is terrestrial so we have land based habitats that is tundra desert based forest mountains grasslands so many then lentic now remember we are talking about lentic it means again it is of both the kinds so these are those ecosystems which have characteristic of aquatic as well as terrestrial for example swampy areas right on the basis of eco lines in last lecture we talked about eco line so it is a gradation it is a gradual change of ecosystem so what happens number 1 from mountains with relatively more moisture to the areas increasing intensity so that is the first part then what we have is areas of higher moisture that is equatorial part to areas of lower moisture that is desert section then lower to higher altitudes for example andean system andes and many other mountain systems then from equatorial hot to moist areas of cold tundras so these are the four important parts in terms of eco lines the gradual shift of the ecosystem based on characteristics now on the basis of scale that is the spatial scale okay now let's look at that continental and oceanic so complete continental ecosystems are classified under one head and oceanic under another head in the system now on the basis of usage if we are talking about their utility of the ecosystem according to ep odom the environmentalist he classified on the basis of uses so cultivated systems and non cultivated systems here it is human perspective of ecosystem coming into the picture so if somebody asks you what is the human perspective of ecosystem classification remember ep odom's classification of the use basis that is cultivated and non cultivated systems then on the basis of source and level of energy so on the basis of source and level of energy we have different classification so first is unsubsidized natural solar powered it completely means when we talk about subsidy it means support it means a ad so it is unsubsidized it means it does not need any support it is based on solar power completely so what is that ocean mountains deep lakes they do not require any power support then natural subsidized okay now here it is subsidized solar power so it is tidal estuaries lowland forests coral reefs so these are naturally subsidized and solar powered okay now the third one is man subsidized it should be human subsidized 
talking about gender bias but man subsidized has been mentioned in the classification that has been given so man subsidized solar powered is when we talk about human beings so food and fiber producing industries like agriculture aquaculture pisciculture so many things are there so those ecosystems that we create is man subsidized solar powered then what we have is fuel powered the urban ecosystems the industrial ecosystems these are based on fuel system right so that is another classification now let's understand the classification on the basis of stages of development okay now when we are talking about stages it is temporal in nature earlier we saw the spatial scale classifications now it is temporal classification and also on the basis of their quality so a is early succession that is the primary community like herbs shrubs grasses isn't it then mature that is having major plants and animals flora fauna which are mature in nature then we have mixed in which primary and secondary or the mature ones are mixed it means something like where agriculture and forest ecosystem the concept of ecotone we studied so mixed is the ecotone concept overlapping of the both and then inert the word itself says it is inert it is not affected by anything else because it has been destroyed there is no change happening in it where do we find that in volcanic areas of the world right on the basis of stability if we say it is debatable it has been debatable because there are many scientists who believe differently so simply stable or complex unstable these are the two classifications and it is largely based on the frequency of species occurrences okay so where species occur in a stable format are they present are they maintaining the ecosystem in a stability or is there complexity of the food chain or food wave phenomena and are they complex and unstable so on that basis this classification is there but remember there is a debate on this this is not an absolute final classification all right now so we completed in today's session the basic concept of ecosystem its structure and components the biotic and abiotic components and finally a large detailed description and classification of these ecosystems so thank you so much all for watching and subscribing to the channel geoecologist thank you so much stay safe stay tuned and keep watching the lectures thanks a lot